næste Bøje Larsens blog. Jeg håber, du vil glæde sig over den video, jeg præsenterer i dag. This video is about Peter Kruder, a famous German musician, pianist and composer, 1905-1981. He stayed in Germany from 1933-1945 to and was a member of the Nazi Party in 1932. However, he resigned his membership in the Nazi Party in 1934 for reasons I do not know. Sebastian Hafner, a notable post-Nazi German journalist and author who wrote extensively about the Nazi period, used the expression Hitler's innocent idiots about such fellow travelers of Nazism. I know Peter Kruder because my parents had several of his recordings, which they had bought while Denmark was occupied by Nazi Germany 1940-1945 and German records, in opposition to USA and UK records, were available in Denmark. I liked the music and experimented with adding his records as sound on 8mm movies. Much later, I bought Kruder's self-biography, titled Ner Puppen Haben Kane Tronen 1971, which can be translated into English as Only Dolls Have No Tears. The book gives a terrible insight into the thinking of those artists and similar people who lived in Germany from 1933 to 1945. They just did not or did not want to see the killings that went on around them. There is no word of the killing of Jews and other minorities in Nazi Germany. Their mental universe is their own career and their love affairs. One might call it a natural protection. One does not see the terror around themselves. And that is how most people protect themselves in dictatorships today, whether in Russia, Iran, South America, or... Just close your eyes, you only live once. There were, however, some Germans who left Germany after 1933. Either we can call them courageous, or they were so good and known abroad that they saw a chance for themselves. Here are some names of those who left Nazi Germany. Arnold Schoenberg, a prominent composer and the founder of the 12-tone technique in music, Schoenberg was of Jewish descent. He left Germany in 1933 and eventually settled in the United States. Kurt Wilde, a renowned composer, especially known for his collaboration with Bertolt Brecht on works like the Thirpenny Opera, while fled the Nazi regime and also moved to the United States, where he had success on Broadway. Paul Hindemith, though not Jewish, Hindemith came under fire due to the modernist style of his music, which was at odds with Nazi ideals. He emigrated in 1938, eventually taking up residence in the United States. Thomas Mann, one of Germany's most celebrated writers and the 1929 Nobel Prize in Literature laureate, Mann was an early critic of the Nazis. He left Germany in 1933, eventually settling in the United States. Bertolt Brecht, the influential playwright and poet, known for his critical stance against the Nazi regime, fled Germany in 1933 and lived in various countries, including my home country Denmark, before also ending up in the United States for a period. Marlena Dietrich, the iconic actress and singer, was already a star when the Nazis came to power. She became a U.S. citizen and was known for her strong anti-Nazi stance, helping in the war effort against Germany. Fritz Lang, the famous film director of Metropolis and M, who was of Jewish descent, left Germany in 1933 and went on to have a successful career in Hollywood, even if his wife stayed in Germany. Now, here are some quotations from Kruder's book Only Dolls Have No Tears. They mainly illustrate that Nazism did not exist. Life, for Kruder, went on as usual. Kruder seldom notes if something happened before or after 1933. It does not seem to be an important date. The important dates were those of his own life. Here is what he writes about the critical year when Hitler manipulated his way to power in Germany. The months after the wedding in 1933 were characterized by a distinct lack of special events. Page 266. My translation. One of the few times in his book where Hitler is mentioned is on page 266, the months after a distinct lack of special events characterized the wedding in 1933, page 467, my translation. And how was Peter Kruder evaluated after 1945? 
In the post-war period, West Germany underwent a process of denazification, but this was applied unevenly across various sectors, including the entertainment industry. Kruder, like many other artists who were active during the Nazi era, was subject to scrutiny. However, the West German entertainment industry was also eager to return to normalcy and to capitalize on the popularity of pre-war and wartime artists. Kruder could resume his career relatively quickly, partly because he was a successful composer and musician who could attract audiences. His music remained popular, and he continued to compose film scores and songs that were well-received. Kruder did not face the same level of ostracism as some other figures who were more overtly associated with Nazi propaganda. Nonetheless, there was certainly a segment of the population that remained skeptical of his wartime activities and affiliations. The Soviet-occupied East Germany, German Democratic Republic, took a harsher stance on individuals associated with the Nazi regime. The East German government instituted a rigorous denazification process, and many who were involved with the Nazis were barred from public life or severely punished. Artists like Kruder, who had thrived under the Nazis, were often viewed with suspicion, and their works were not as widely promoted or accepted. But East Germany also had programs that showed old Nazi films and stars. I do not know if Kruder was one of those shown. Thank you for watching my video today. Please support me by becoming a subscriber.